Hey everyone, my name is Austin Schur with We Write About Music, and today I'm here with Jared and Jonathan Matson of The Matson 2. Following up their incredible 2019 album, Paradise, they're making their return to music this coming Friday with a brand new single. Here's our interview. 17 years? Yeah. Long time, long time. Is that the verdict? 17 years? That's the calculations? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Awesome. Please continue, Austin. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, is this upcoming release something that was initially planned, or is this more of like a you know we're bored in quarantine type of idea, or is this more just a continuation of your past release? It's it, uh, we're we got a message from our friend Chaz, and he in, encouraged us to check out this platform called Stem. Um, it empowers artists to release their own music whenever they want. And since signing with them, we uh, we were just pumped and we're like, we should at least just try it out and just release something. Um, it's been over a year since we released anything. So yeah, it's kind of just that. It's kind of just like kind of cooped up and just wanting to see if it makes people happy or makes us happy and just <laughs> see what happens. Of course. Of yeah, course. I think it's, it's also, you know, we're pulling from a piece we wrote a little bit ago. And we have like, we're sitting on a bunch of, we're sitting on a bunch of music that we've been writing pre-pandemic and during the pandemic. So it's just a good time to release something I feel. And we're, we feel like a lot of people are, you know, they're not going to live shows and stuff. So to have something like this to, to you know, give them some, some interest in us and a new release would be, I think it'd be a good thing, a good move and uh, would hopefully make people, people stoked. Oh, it's, it's got me stoked. So if you got one person, you got me. Um, I, I was going to say, Jared, thank you so much for uh, for sending the song over early. I've probably listened to it at least 10 times at this point. Um, oh, wow. Right. And I, I don't want to give too much away, but I have to say, you know, as much as it still has your signature, you know, Mats and Two sound to it, it also sort of feels like it has a little bit of a departure in sound. Um, is it indicative of a future sound or is it more just kind of like the evolution of where you're going overall? This, this is something we've really put a lot of thought into. Um, it particularly revolves around the bass, sound, bass sounds, mm -hmm. um, which I'm not going to give away, but it's, yeah. has, it has a lot to do with the bass and the drums, the way they're recorded and you know, things like that. But this is kind of where we've arrived at lately creatively. So a lot of tunes coming out in the future is going to have kind of this, this vibe, this kind of uh, this world that kind of lives in the organic, but plays with digital at the same time. <clears throat> got it. Got it. Yeah, I love it. It's fantastic. It's exactly kind of the direction that I wanted to see you go in. So I'm really excited for uh, the listeners and the readers and the viewers at home to take a listen on Friday. Right on. Um, and so I wanted to say, you know, it's it's seriously unbelievable the sounds that you both are able to create with you just being a band of two. Uh, what instruments do you play specifically? What do you feel that you excel at the most? Um, Jared kind of plays a whole gamut of different stuff, but I mostly stick to the drums and the vocals and a, a little bit of uh, embellishments on the, you know, keyboards and things like that. But live, oh, okay. if you see us live, we do we do it's all drums and then and then jerry does like double neck with looping and stuff like that and we both sing got it well got it my, well i got my scholarship from uh, playing the oboe so i play the oboe no no i'm just kidding no. um, <laughs> could have fooled uh, me <laughs> no, it's the french horn actually the french horn um so yeah and then uh my what i grew up playing was the swinette <laughs> swinette <laughs> is a dry dead pig <laughs> With a nozzle going through it, that you go. Pew! What the hell? <laughs> so the swine out was my first. Check that out on, on Google. Swine out was oh, well. so love. <laughs> um, no guitar, bass, keyboard, um, and I've been I've been really enjoying production, like looping samples of drums, Jonathan's drums, and chopping them up and throwing them this way and that. <clears throat> but yeah, it's kind of what you think: keyboard, bass, and drums. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do have a sax one that I need to learn. That would be just another perfect addition to the overall sound. But don't don't <laughs> rush it. What you guys got on what you guys got going on right now is is perfect. So well, if he's already got the swine that dialed, he can <laughs> I really have no idea what that is. So I'll <laughs> definitely be checking it out. 
um, so I, you know, you're trying to live your lives during pandemic times. Is is music what's really been keeping you busy and not kind of pissed off at the world? For me, it's been my family. It's been like an amazing time to be with my family. I have a daughter, four-year-old daughter, and my wife and I are having a second daughter end of December. So oh, we've I've been stoked to spend. Thank you so much. I've been spoke, stoked to spend so much time with them. And it's kind of been the silver lining in, in this all um music shutdown thing for me because i i'm usually you know i'm usually gone i'm usually at home like a week out of the month usually so um so this is this has been good for me in that realm <laughs> yeah it's i mean <clears throat> i live in a cabin so with a studio in it so it's like that's been a hugely therapeutic way of dealing with um you know all the critical stuff that's happening um and yeah i mean you could you could take a you could take many trips through music spatially um imaginatively whatever you can possibly think of you can do and uh it's a it's a it's a very special creative outlet that like i wish more people had cuz yeah i think that's one of the main things helping and also i really started cooking a lot which i love cooking uh. now same. Um, I was forced in the <laughs> yeah. earlier part of the pandemic when even restaurants were closed. <clears throat> I was forced to basically up my up my cooking game. So that's been super awesome too. Because you're a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> um. So so you said that you have your own studio. That that was going to be my next thing was. What's the recording process looking for you like these days? Um, is it a lot of files sent back and forth? You guys get together to jam? Um, how are things working? Straight postal, postal service. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. We I, Twins think alike. I was going to say postal service vibes. We Like me having a family now, even like though Jared's like 30 minutes away from me, it's it's a little harder to skip out. So over the, over the summer, I got my own home studio in order and dialed out. And so I can... It's been the best thing ever. And we write music so much faster now, being able to just send each other stuff. So that's been really cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. the home studio and kind of being locked oh. in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan hit it pretty much all. Yeah. The, oh, I'm trying to think. What else? The it sounds like you had is, something there. Yeah, no, the, the, on a musical level, the process is more more bass heavy than ever before um once you get a good bass line over the over the killer drums of mr jonathan charles matson um you could, then then that gives me now the landscape of where i want to go compositionally and probably similar to the way jonathan feels too but to be honest my approach has been just get that bass down and then what's fun about having that is that you could have all sorts of weird harmonies that wouldn't normally be with that bass line um, cause I feel like the bass is very informed and ruled by the harmony that's happening in the chordal instruments. So if the mm -hmm. chord's taken out, it gives the bass more freedom to speak what it wants to speak. Um, so that's been a great new process to making music. Cause before that we'd always just do rhythm guitar and drums and loop the rhythm and then play the melody. But we use okay. very little looping now in the compositional process. You're building, building songs around bass lines is what I'm hearing. Or that's where it's kind of starting? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I For mean, sure. that's With that's not something group, that I've heard of drum before, but obviously and then everyone. Lines, yeah. And then yeah. That's that's amazing. Um, damn, you oh, guys, thanks. you got it down. You're just trying new things all over the place. I feel like now's kind of the time to experiment. <laughs> Maybe you're not uh, necessarily tied down to uh, you know, we need to be done by this time and you got so much time at home in a studio, you're not worrying about paying by the hour or whatever it is. So uh yeah, that's definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was gonna say my totally. my first my first introduction to you guys was your collaboration with uh with Chaz Bundick of Tori Moi on Star Stuff, which is probably one of my most listened to records of the past three years at this point. Um, what's your relationship with him and, and how did that kind of come <laughs> about? Um, from, it started with, uh, 
I mean, you could read it everywhere. It's all around there on the internet. But it started with uh, me forgetting my drum throne for a show. And then my friend, Andrew Painter, who's friends with Chaz, who we didn't even, we didn't even know who Tori Umal was or if, that they in, existed prior to meeting Chaz. And uh, so I met him in Berkeley, super sweet guy. And he let me borrow his throne and then played the show. And then we met again for coffee the next day. And then we, we just talked all about music for hours and had coffee. Jared and I and Andrew and Andrew, my friend Andrew Painter. We also bonded over our love, over our love for Jeff McFetridge. That's true. Who did one of our album covers? Um, so, anyways, it was just like a really serendipitous encounter with neither of us, neither Chaz nor Jared and I, knowing of each other's work. So, mm -hmm. I think that's what made it so honest and fresh. And after that day we gave Chaz some of our music and he gave us some of his. And then like, he sent us a, a message saying that we got a jam. We got a jam soon. Next time you're in town, let me know. And so we, so we got together, we jammed and the, and the, actually the, it's crazy because the very first track of the whole album, Sun Moi, is the very first jam we uh, we ever did together. That's and awesome. it's pretty much completely intact and nothing has changed since that first, like nothing really happened post-production to make it any different than what, originally occurred on that first second oh, wow. so 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 yeah a that's a unique that's a unique track <laughs> that's we've super cool everything that jonathan described and we've turned into great friends mm -hmm. and uh he makes fun of the way we say chicken he makes <laughs> every time we say chicken he makes fun of us <laughs> <laughs> and he hates apple juice so i we give him crap about apple juice interesting yeah, I'm not the biggest like fan it. of apple juice. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> uh, that's um, super cool, work, though. Working with him, work, working with uh, him is what taught it. me to think about the bass more, actually. Mm -hmm. And to, to, you know, if you listen to our records before Paradise and before Star Stuff, um, we kind of got really shoegazy with it and did like 20 overdubs for some of the songs, even though they're, even though they're more jazzy than our current stuff. True. We had a lot more overdubs and craziness on the other stuff. Um, but now working with Chaz and his level of minimalism in the track and letting, making sure that each voice that you're recording is strong, as opposed to a lot of little weak ones building a strong one, um, has been a, a, a huge eye-opening creative experience. That's super cool. Um, and I was going to say, you know, you guys are very jazz oriented in everything you do. I mean, your, uh, your I, I guess, cover album of A Love Supreme is fantastic as well. <laughs> who who would be like a dream collaborator uh jazz wise i mean alive or dead really pat Matheny. yeah pat Matheny. yeah how about you johnny i'd be down to get kenny g to solo on some tracks i'd be Ooh. interested to hear what it, even though he's <laughs> even though he's even though he's totally out there to have a collab of him playing over our stuff and our chords and the way we see harmony I think it would be pretty incredible. That would be so cool. I feel like that's not even that far off. Like that's a get, that's a person you could get somehow. Yeah, I invited them to our Seattle show, but he never responded. But, but no, I, but I would say also, <laughs> if you take it to a different, the whole other perspective is we love the dudes and bad, but not good to do something with them would be amazing. Yes. And yeah. they're, they're always doing collaborations and stuff like that. That would be great as well. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of dreams out there. Yeah. I mean, Herbie Hancock would slay. Sure. He's, uh, I just love that he's completely revamped his 80s vibe because I feel like, not not to like generalize, but a lot of the jazzers, I think they looked back on their 80s stuff and thought it was cheesy or they kind of sold out or whatever, or they kind of judge a little harshly, but that's some of the best stuff in a lot of those catalogs. And to see them openly embracing that sound again is, is, is uh, really cool. I don't think that would have, I don't think he would have known how, I'm just generalizing again, but I don't think Herbie would have known how cool it was unless like dudes like Kamasi Washington and cats like that were kind of, you know, breathing new life into jazz by using some of those 80s elements in their, in their music, like synthesizers and stuff. Um, so I don't know, can't be sure, but they, he's definitely proud of it now. And whereas when I first got into Herbie Hancock, he wrote very modern, just like straight ahead stuff and never talked about his rocket year right now jazz is a it's a genre 
that I've always wanted to explore, but I feel that it's very intimidating. Like there's a lot out there. There's a lot in the past. Um, who are like, or what, I guess, what are some like some key albums that you would tell the listeners to be checking out if they were looking to like first get into the, to the genre itself? Oh, interesting questions. Um, <clears throat> I think you got to embrace all different time, time periods of jazz and right. all different, I mean, there's so many subgroups within it, so you can't really, it's hard to say. Like I would say, I would say you should check out if you want to be exposed to it, like get, of course, like something like Love, uh, Love Supreme by John Coltrane and then delve into some Sunday at the Village Vanguard, Bill Evans, and then also go modern with like Bad Man Not Good album number three and then like hmm. throw in Tortoise TNT because that's like, to me, that's an amalgamation of of showing that jazz doesn't need to have boundaries and doesn't need to be a museum piece. It can be something that's expressive of, of like a modern statement that's not so not so dependent on on the historical context. And then that, those would be like a top four for me. Nice. I I would say the the industry standard, um, Miles Davis kind of blue. Mm -hmm. This is a broken record by now, but everyone says this. But there's a reason why they ever everyone says it. Giant Steps, Coltrane, and then Dave Brubeck, Take Five. Um, those are the biggest I think those are the most sold rec jazz records ever maybe um, might want to fact check that one <laughs> but uh, I'll just take your word for it <laughs> those, those, three, those three are some of the biggest heavy hitters and then uh, I thought it was interesting Jonathan threw in Bad But Not Good I love that, that idea um, and then last one I'd say that they should get would be Gabor Zabo 1969 okay i'm i'm familiar with maybe half of those artists and so it looks like i have some homework to do on my end i mean i i love bad bad not good i've seen them probably four or five times at this point and they always put on an amazing show and i kind of feel yeah. like that was my entryway into like oh it can you know it doesn't all have to be kind of like out there music it can be uh I don't know how to put it. It can be very like constrained in a sense, but also with a lot of experimentation to it. So um, I will definitely be listening back on. to this and, and checking out all those albums. So thank you guys. Um, so, so my next thing was going to be, you know, obviously things are super tough right now, um, but what's been kind of like your, your favorite part about this line of work? Like what's bringing you happiness? I think for me, just discovering new music and, and listening to a bunch of music, being with, being with my daughter, seeing her grow up, um, and things like that. Simple, simple things. Keeping in touch with friends that are musicians and seeing how they're navigating. And um, yeah, just things like that. Yeah, I agree. And uh, making a sandwich really makes me happy. Like... Well, what's the go-to go sandwich? <laughs> like, I'm, it seriously makes me happy. Like, getting the tomatoes out, getting, cutting the tomatoes, mm -hmm. cutting the onions, lettuce, salami, the bread, just throw the bread on the iron skillet for a little bit, toast it up, uh, mayonnaise and mustard. Make, how can you not smile? Um, it's true. Who doesn't love a good homemade sandwich when you got so all the ingredients that, and it's fresh? <laughs> I get it. Uh, <laughs> If you got if you got sprouts, then throw some sprouts in there. If you got olives, hell, chop the olives and throw them in there. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah. So no, I get amazing. it. The, the other thing is, uh, just like Leave Jonathan it, said, keeping keep keeping in touch with friends and mm -hmm. telling them you love them, and like keeping your peop, keeping your tribe close, and expressing love, gratitude, positivity. No, I fully agree. And like going back to what you said about keeping things simple, obviously now is not a time to stress your <laughs> stress yourself out even more. So even going back to albums that made you happy pre-pandemic or just um, things you're more familiar with, whether it be music or movies or TV, just the familiarity and finding little you know bits of happiness here and there can be so uplifting. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was going to say, so... Uh, 
I think it was maybe a week or two before we fully went into lockdown. Uh, my friends and I, we had rented a house in Joshua Tree to see you guys play at Pappy and Harriet's. And it was oh. going to be the last concert like i think they maybe it was like in the in-between time where it was like are we locking down what is this thing and so yeah you guys were supposed to be uh the next concert i saw so it's really really a shame we had to cancel everything and uh kind of you know refund the situation but um you know hoping hopefully in the early half of 2021 Mm -hmm. we can get back out there and see you again Yeah, that was that's, that was a dream that's a crusher. crusher. Yeah. That was gonna be amazing. That's like that was one of the shows, honestly, that I was I was looking forward to that one the most out of all of the shows. That oh was yeah, gonna be in, incredible. It's a legendary one, venue. I think that one like sold out first. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, your I, dog. You, show us your dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. What's uh, what's his, his name? Peanut. His name is Peanut. Oh, Peanut. I used to have a dog named His Peanut. name's Peanut. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm breaking up a little, I think. But yeah, his name is Peanut. He's six months old. I am just going to, you know, I, I want to thank you guys so much for your time. Um, so I'm just going to wrap things up here before, uh, before the internet takes out yeah. again. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the single is coming out this Friday. Super excited for it. Um, obviously, I don't know if you're at liberty to say, but we hope that there's something more on the way, whether it uh, is coming in the form of an EP or an album or just uh, multiple single releases. So up Thank to you, you on, so what, on what you want to share, um, but definitely looking forward to anything that you guys put out. That's all you get. That's fine. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> tell them, Johnny. Oh, I don't know what to tell them, but we're well, working on a bunch we have of a stuff. Lot, we have a lot of stuff yeah. on the way. We're working on a bunch of stuff, and I appreciate you covering this one. And um, Yeah, you'll definitely know when the other stuff is getting ready to get released. Awesome. Expect some, some covers and some collaborations. Wait, okay. Well, I'm excited for both. Like I said, anything you guys put out, we'll definitely be listening to and uh, oh, thank you. putting out reviews for. Um, <laughs> so I'll let you get back to the rest of your day. Okay. But thank you again so much. Um, and uh, thank you. yeah, hope to talk soon. We'll definitely be reviewing your stuff. Thank you okay. for your time, man. Have yeah, a good man. day. Take care. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.